In this episode of the Elm Hill City Zoo, we will build a habitat for the sand cat. The enclosure will have the indoor and the outdoor section, and as it turns out, I was able to add this enclosure to the wildcat house that we have in the zoo, so I know that a lot of you guys will be happy about this. <laughs> Hello guys, this is Caesar Creates and welcome back to my channel. Today we are finally adding the sand cuts to the Elm Hill City Zoo and I know that a lot of you will be happy because I found a way to add it to the wildcat house. So when I said that the wildcat house is finished, I was lying because it's not. I found a way to add the sand cut and that also means, and here is a little spoiler alert, that in the future we will also add the links and not missing cut uh, to this wildcat house. So yeah, in today's video we'll talk of course about the habitat, we'll talk about the sand cut and we'll also uh, do a little discussion about the new uh, Oceania pack uh, and about the future of Planet Zoo. So if you are excited for this, definitely stay tuned. We basically have some news, uh, very exciting news that I would like to share with you guys. So, if you have been following my channel for a while, you probably know that we've been building this big wildcat house in the Elm Hill City Zoo, and it was quite a big project. I added so many different cats in here, including the snow leopard, the cougar, the Siberian tiger, the armor leopard, the lion, the cheetah, the jaguar, the clouded leopard, and the cougar, uh, and the two cats that I didn't include in here that were available in the game back then were the Bengal tiger because I simply had a Siberian tiger and I didn't add the links in there because I simply didn't have space for it. This was planned from the very beginning for, for nine habitats for nine different cats and I filled those habitats with nine cats and then uh, the links was unfortunately not included there but I figure out that you know uh, the links would live naturally in the very similar like temperatures and biome that we are building this zoo in so I will eventually build something for it outside next to this house but still I got so many comments from you guys why you didn't include the links you forgot about the links like you should add the links to the wildcat house and so on uh, I was responding to those comments with the same thing that will add eventually the links somewhere in the zoo and so on but then the sand cut was also added with the uh, with the arid animal pack and the comments again were there add the sand cut to the Elm Hill City Zoo to the Wildcat House, please do it. You should add the sand cut to the, uh, to the Wildcat House and so on. There's so many comments like this. So I decided, okay, if you guys want to see it, I will do it. I will find a way of adding the, those two cats to this uh, house. It was a lot of thinking outside the box because I still wanted the indoor area for the, uh, for the sand cut uh, to be visible from the inside of the wildcat house because this was the entire concept. Uh, if we have those cats that prefer to live in warmer climates, then they'll be probably spending the winter inside and the sand cat is definitely one of those cats uh, so that was the main struggle because I didn't have space uh, inside of the actual wildcat house to add another indoor area so what I decided to do let's just imagine now <laughs> that uh, the wildcat house is sort of like an older building it was maybe it's not maybe not a very old building it was built like in I don't know 80s or 90s uh, and over the time when the zoo was developing adding different animals and so on uh, it decided to expand the wildcat house to add some new additions uh, just like the sand cut and the lynx uh, and it was done in the modern time so uh, the uh, additions to uh, the wildcat house are sort of more like modern and you can clearly see that they were added later it will still all match it will still all look seamless nice and so on but uh, it's clearly an addition uh, and I sort of like this backstory and this way of thinking about it because it abso absolutely makes sense the zoos are building new habitats the zoos are developing all the time uh, so seeing uh, like an older building with like a modern uh, modern part that was built like later is nothing too unusual for zoos so this is what I decided to 
to do here. When it comes to inspiration for the actual sand cut habitats, I looked at different habitats for the sand cuts online, uh, and then I decided to again uh, go back to my uh, one of my favorite zoos, the Berlin Zoo. You guys know how much I love it, uh, and build something maybe not super inspired by something similar to that because I really like the uh, the sand cut habitat in that zoo. Uh, so what I had to do is this entire mesh structure, like this netting above the habitat. This is what I saw in many different sand cat habitats. This is just simply to prevent any potential escapes. The sand cats, they live on the desert, but they are still cats and they can still climb and escape. And that's why I was building this entire mesh structure at the beginning of the video. That right now looks to me a bit like a circus tent. <laughs> I don't know why, but I cannot unsee it. Uh, but yeah, my idea was to have it very symmetrical and uh, to have the entire outside area in this track really uh, interesting like really really love it i also use the new rough ropes from the tropical pack uh, if you change the color of them to this more like grayish one they sort of look like those metal uh, robes those metal robes made from those really small wires that are really strong and really good when it comes to supporting structures like that so uh, this is what i went for then i created the glass barrier for the outdoor habitat using a lot of metal pieces using one of my favorite pieces in the game right now this very thin metal piece from the twilight pack it looks so good when you use this we use it for those metal structures uh, it has this like a bit weathered look to it so that the entire metal structure doesn't look so new and unused uh, this is my one of my main uh, problems with planets actually especially with those older packs and the base game pieces that they are very like clean very like uh, i don't know being just you know perfectly <laughs> perfectly done without any i don't know scratches anything like that and the things in zoos when there's tons of people and tons of animals they just don't look like this so that's why i am often adding so many those like uh, ground decals uh, to make them look a bit more weather whether it's older and so on uh, and this is why i appreciate those uh, those peeling pieces so much because they had their this look to them and they just look amazing. First you will focus on the whole like uh, building on the whole structure, uh, the pathing outside the habitat, we'll add some planters, we'll add the windows that will allow the guests to see the sand cat when they are in their indoor area so there will be two windows outside and one smaller window that I was able to you know squeeze in the wildcat house. It will be actually inside the house so if the weather will be for example bad the guests will still uh, be able to see the indoor area of the sand cat without going out of the uh, of the wildcat house of course you will see that all in the cinematics by the end of the video what i also should say is that there will be some skipping in this video the whole entire speed build when i uh you know finished building was uh, over an hour so i didn't want to make to make this video so long uh, and i decided to uh, cut out uh, loads of it so uh, i know you guys will be able to figure out what i did there i for example skipped the pathing uh, i did the whole path with the plaster pieces and then i added the actual guest path underneath it because i sometimes get those comments how i am able to do the path so seamless this is mainly and this is because i am using different building materials to do my own path and then i am adding the guest path underneath uh, to achieve this more like you know seamless uh, like look that the path is actually uh, in the places that i want it to be it's so hard sometimes to do it in planet zoo uh, but yeah this is my secret maybe it's not a huge secret but this is how i do it in case you wonder it so in one of my last videos i said that before the release of the new pack for planet zoo uh, i still want to add two different animals from the arid pack that i didn't have a chance to add to elm hill city zoo and i still really want to add them uh, and i meant the sand cat and the uh, camel but the release date of the new dlc the oceania pack when it was actually announced when it will be released it is the 19th or 19th of September. Uh, I think that a lot of us, including me, were very surprised that it is coming uh, so soon. I thought that the release date will be probably on the 26th of uh, September. So, but Planet Zoo decided to release the new Oceania Park a bit earlier uh, in, on the 19th. And uh, of course, it's perfect. Of course, we are all happy that we are getting a new, par a new pack so soon. But that means that I 
won't be able to add the two animals. So the sand cat is the last animal that I will be adding to the Elm Hill City Zoo before the Oceania pack comes out. Uh, I still really want to add the camel because I have a really cool idea for it. Uh, so you can expect that as soon as we'll add some animals from the Oceania pack to the Elm Hill City Zoo. I will go back to the uh, Arid Animal Pack for a second and add the, uh, the camel because I really have a nice idea for it and I think a lot of you guys will be happy and excited for this idea so definitely stay tuned to see what I have planned. Uh, okay, and when it comes to the Oceania pack, I am still super, super, super happy about this DLC. I think that uh, it is one of the best DLC that we got recently. Uh, I know that, of course, there are some people that are not happy with it, that would prefer different things, that, of course, I saw so many comments about flying birds and so on, but, but hey, there won't ever be a pack that will satisfy us all. I am sure that even if they will release a pack with only flying birds, there will be some people complaining that they preferred something else <laughs> but this is just the way it is i am very very happy because a lot of those animals actually uh, i think that three of them were from my wish list that you could see on youtube so uh, to uh, the tasmanian devil and the kiwi i included in my habitat wish list uh, and the flying fox was in the exhibit wish list so Super, super happy for those, super happy that they will be added. And I have already some plans and some ideas on how to incorporate uh, all of those animals to the Elm Hill City Zoo. I think that uh, we will build for the habitat animals first. Uh, because I already know what I want to do for them in the little Australia section that we have in the zoo. Uh, so if you don't know, we have a little Australia section here with the wallabies, emus and the uh, common wombats. Uh, so now we'll add also the uh, the kiwi, the Tasmanian devil and the uh, quokka and change the name to the Oceania uh, section. And when it comes to the flying fox, uh, I am thinking about building uh, like a huge, I no dome or a huge like uh, simply like an indoor jungle with some for some of the trop more tropical animals like the walk through jungle something that i showed you guys uh, on my instagram when i was uh, in Turek zoo they had this like huge hole with madagascar nature and madagascar animals and so on so i sort of think about building something like this with the sloth with the bats with uh, some other like more tropical animals i will see but i think that i will add the bats a bit later uh, i saw some suggestions that i should add the bats to the bat house that i created for the egyptian fruit bats but that bat house is actually situated in the african section of our zoo because the Egyptian fruit bats are simply from Africa. Uh, so it doesn't really make sense to add the Oceanian species to this uh, house unless I want to move it somewhere else. But I don't know, I will still consider that. But for sure, we'll firstly build for uh, the habitat animals. So uh, you can expect that very soon on my channel. Uh, as soon as the, uh, the uh, pack will be released, I will start building for those lovely, lovely guys. I just love them i love the tasmanian devil i think it is super a unique animal it was actually the highest animal on all the meta wish lists on forums so no wonder that they decided to add it uh, i also love the quokka it was it is such an unexpected animal uh, but quokkas are more and more popular uh, in zeus and i feel like more popular in general due to their cheerful like smiling appearance uh, we actually have a first zoo in europe that houses them it is in stuttgart in germany uh, I would love to see them one day in the zoo. I just need to plan my trip there. Uh, so also super happy that they will be added. Of course, I love the Kiwi. I wanted to have a Kiwi for such a long time in the game uh, and uh, building for it will also be fun. It will have to inclu inclu include some like a nocturnal house or nocturnal section for them because they are simply nocturnal. So uh, I am very excited to build something like that. And I am actually recording this video on the day that we got the first screenshot of the little penguin and it is so beautiful and so well done. I just love those little guys so much and building
building for a penguins in Planet Zoo is a lot of fun. They don't need much space. Uh, you can build some cool, like, uh, you know, rock formations for them. You can build a cool underwater viewing for them. I am very happy that they decided to add another penguin and such an interesting one. I'm still hoping for the rock hopper in the future, but I uh, guess we'll have to see. The only thing uh, I saw a lot of comments like this, and I sort of agree with that, that it was a perfect opportunity to add another fun favorite and another animal that is very high on the meta wish list, uh, the tree kangaroo. And I am still hoping for the future that they will maybe eventually decide to add it in the, some of the maybe animal packs, like biome specific animal packs or something like that. Uh, I know that probably, uh, you know, creating a tree kangaroo is a bit more like demanding because of the climbing, because of different animations and so on, but uh, it would be so, so cool if we actually uh, would get it uh, one day. And this brings me to the topic of uh, the future of Planet Zoo, because we have some news. So basically this week, Frontier released their financial results document, and this is something that they released for their investors. And if you'll read carefully through all this document, you will find some interesting information. So, for example, uh, they will be releasing soon uh, two big Planet games from Planet franchise, I guess. So one of them should probably be uh, the Planet Coaster 2 and the second one I have no idea what will be. But there's also some information about the Planet Zoo in there. So this is what I am reading from this document. Jurassic World Evolution 2 and Planet Zoo performed especially well. Supported by four new PDLC packs releasing in FY23 alongside free content. So basically PDLC means, means paid DLC. So, so it just says that the DLC are, you know, it costs us money, we need to pay them for them. Uh, and the FY23 is the financial year 23. And for them, the financial year ends at the end of May and the new uh, financial year begins in uh, in June. So uh, right now we are in financial year 24. Uh, and in 23, they released four different DLCs. So the last one that they released was probably the Tropical Pack. And now there's something exciting. Uh, in financial year 24, the new PDLC packs and free content for both Jurassic World Evolution 2 and Planet Zoo have already been released with more plants during this financial year. So the ones that were already released are of course the Arid pack and the Oceania pack, which is on the way, and more plants during this financial year, which means that I am pretty sure that we'll get at least one more DLC uh, in winter. Uh, at the end of the year and I think that we'll get one or maybe two uh, at the beginning of the next year so I am very hopeful that the support for this game doesn't end this year because I saw so many people claiming that uh, it will end this year that we'll ha only have two more DLCs left uh, and then, then it's over uh, so uh, this probably means that we will get new DLCs in the next year and maybe if they will perform really well we'll get more of those in the future who knows we, there's nothing said more in there but yeah really really cool also really cool for the jurassic world evolution too because i also love this game and i plan to record more <laughs> so if you like my jurassic world evolution 2 videos uh, you should definitely be excited as well okay so this is all when it comes to some exciting news uh, for planet zoo i'm very very curious what will happen for this game in the future this is such an amazing time it is basically so 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 incredible that we are still getting those dlc the game is almost four years old and it is still being supported there are some really cool and amazing additions still being added to the game such as the new viewing bubbles that we'll get in the new uh free update which are just such an amazing idea and I cannot wait to add them to some of my habitats. Okay, but let's go back to our sand cuts. Let's go back to everything that we did while I was talking about all that. Uh, so, as you guys can see, uh, I am almost done with decorating the uh, outdoor area for the uh, for the sand cuts. I decided to use uh, my favorite rock walls uh, to create a background of this habitat. And then when it comes to all the rocks and different things that I wanted to add here, I had like three different attempts on how I want to make it look because I was you know building something deleting building deleting and what you can see right now is basically a third attempt on building this and this time i am 
let's say satisfied with the final final result but that's why uh, some of the rocks and so on were already there while, where, uh, while I started to build uh, this uh, simply outer part and uh, you know the hardscape adding plants and so on uh, what I also did earlier was add some planters add different things I added the ivy on those really cool mesh panels that I installed on the walls of the building uh, I actually created them so long ago for the fallow deer habitat I think it was so so long ago uh, so I decided to reuse them what I can tell you about adding ivy anywhere in your parks and so on I often see a mistake a slight mistake that people do I'm not an expert on plants or so on but uh, the ivy it has roots and the roots needs to grow in a planter or in the ground or anywhere the ivy cannot just hang from the roof or hang from something else it needs to have some sort of like a connection to the soil to <laughs> to uh, the the grounds uh, i often see people you know decorating their buildings uh, or uh, different things with the ivy and it makes sense as long as it is for example you think of it as a fake plant and if it's not fake then it, it should start somewhere like in the ground and then you know climb and make its way up to uh, the to the roof of the building or something like that and this is what I wanted to add in here I wanted to make sure that it won't just you know hang on this a whole structure it will have uh, the roots in the ground so uh, yeah just a little tip for a, a little more uh, realistic builds in planet zoo i guess the sand cat has just a perfect uh, traversable area for those new animals are so so good when it comes to that i basically created this whole habitat without even checking if they'll be able to you know walk everywhere and so on and they were able to you know explore the whole habitats just right away and i added them in here uh, so so I am super super happy about this uh, also you guys probably know by now that I am NOT a huge cat person I am totally a dog person <laughs> so uh, I've been building for cats quite a lot lately and I had this urge to build finally for a dog but unfortunately we don't get too many new dogs in the game we used to get some foxes and so on and right now I am sort of missing a new dog in the game maybe planet zoo please I would love to have a bush dog for example they are so cool and so tidy and so like uh, like feisty looking but the sand cat still is such a cool addition I think it is totally adorable it is so cool that we have such a small cat in the game actually and most of them are very big and there's a lot of wild small cats in uh, in the wild for example a fishing cat uh, so so cool that actually one of them was added uh, I know that a lot of uh, can cat fans and cat persons were so obsessed with it so of course I needed to add it, uh, even though I am super allergic to cats and I am not a huge fan, I don't know, I just met so many rude cats in my life, I don't know why, but I just don't, don't trust don't, those animals. So when it comes to the sand cat habitat, I wanted to include a lot of rocks, uh, I also wanted to include a lot of uh, different high uh, variations, elevations and so on, so the cats can have uh, different rocks that they can climb on, they are actually are able to climb a lot of those rocks in the habitat. Uh, that they for example have some rock shelves on which they can sleep uh, and also uh, that there's maybe not too many plants but there is there are still some plants the outer area was meant to look uh, somehow like a, a temperate biome zoo tried to do a desert themed habitat but with the temperate plants <laughs> i was going for something like that they of course they wouldn't couldn't use the plants that would actually grow on the desert because they wouldn't survive in in such a climate but they try to use different plants that sort of grow in our climates for uh, the, the habitat like this i hope you guys get what i'm saying and uh, yeah i'm so happy that the cats can walk on everything can jump on the rock formations can use the locks i also created like a sort of like a uh, my own dead tree in there with a lot of branches i also wanted to incorporate a little pond for them i actually wanted to add a normal water section but i couldn't i just couldn't uh, add the water in there so i decided to add the ugly water pipe uh, and just to hide it a bit in the in the rocks and uh, using the foliage and in the end you cannot really see that it is there and you can still see this little pond which is super super amazing and i just love it so after the outdoor area is done, I continue to do the indoor area and 
There I wanted to make it look a bit more like uh, deserty, so so I added the rock walls as the background in more like um, brighter colors, and I also added a lot of dry bushes, a lot of smaller rocks, and so on to try to build. Uh, something that will look more dry and something like their natural habitat and they are able to go in there without any problems uh, I also did a whole backstage area, but I will show you it in the cinematic shots by the end of the video So you have a little surprise uh, so yeah, this was basically all that I created in here. When it comes to the fun facts about the sand cats, there are some cool things, especially that the sand cat is the only cat species that lives primarily in the desert. The temperatures there can be up to 50 degrees Celsius and they have some adaptations on how they deal with such a heat. So first of all, they have uh, additional like hair on their paws so they can walk on a very hot sand uh, and they also uh, are more silent thanks to that so that they can catch the prey more easier uh, they are very specialized uh, snake hunters so they can eat even po poisonous snakes for example the horned vipers that we also have in the game and their large ears are also specialized in both enabling them to hear the borrowing prey so they can actually hear the prey which is under the ground and they act as a thermal regulator so yeah this is another really really interesting animal and with that being set uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video this is all that i have for you today please consider to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already we are missing only 40 subscribers to uh, 23 000. so it will be so cool to celebrate that before the uh, oceania pack comes out if you guys enjoyed today's video please give it a big thumbs up down below and ring the bell if you want to be notified every time i upload a new video and leave me a nice comment down below tell me what you think about the habitat tell me if you are excited for the back return of the wildcat house uh, i am so glad that i actually find found a way of adding those different cats to this house maybe it's not super realistic to have so many cat species in one building in zoo uh, but hey this is still planet zoo we can have some fun with it uh, and as long as you guys are enjoying my ideas and enjoying my uh habitats i will continue to do it uh, so yeah thank you guys again so much for watching if you like to support the channel a little bit extra you can do it with the join button down below uh, and yeah this is all so thank you guys so much for watching have a wonderful day and i'll see you in the next one bye guys